What's up guys? I'm the Mechanic on Road. Today, we're going to be talking about aluminum air batteries. Now this has been a fun project that I've had for a number of years now. And I found that while there's some information on YouTube, it's generally hard to come across. So I figured that I could throw in my experience with them. Now keep in mind, it's definitely something that I didn't pick up while fixing cars. I did this purely for the interest of it. So take everything I say with a grain of salt, because I'm certainly no expert. And if it's not obvious, electricity can be dangerous if not handled properly. So definitely use this information at your own risk and don't try this at all. I'm not gonna get a whole lot into the science behind the aluminum air battery. Because if you're watching this video, chances are you've already read the Wikipedia page on it, and that's all I've really done. Let's build one. What exactly do I need to have to do that? First, I need a source of carbon for the cathode. I chose to go with powdered graphite. I'm gonna use some paint to mix with the graphite powder so it doesn't get everywhere, and I can easily apply it. Next, I need some aluminum for the anode. I went with some good old fashioned aluminum foil, some salt water to act as my electrolyte, some copper mesh to conduct everything, some parchment paper to act as a separator between the battery cells, some scissors to cut everything up with, a deck of playing cards to keep everything in uniform shape. I use some paper towel to hold the electrolyte and the cathode. And of course, this would not be a proper project without duct tape to hold everything together. If you missed any of that, don't worry. I've got a list down in the description. Also, not all these materials need to be exact. Other people have made aluminum air batteries in very different ways, but I picked most of these materials because they complement the design that I've come up with. All right, we've got our supplies. Now, how do we put it all together? Easy, put it into a pile and snap your fingers like this. Ta-da! Okay, maybe it's a little tougher than that. Let's start with the cathode. This battery has 10 cells. So I'm gonna take my paper towel and I'm gonna cut out 10 pieces using my playing card as a template. I want these pieces of paper towel to be slightly smaller than the playing card. Next, I'm gonna get my copper mesh and I'm gonna cut out 11 strips. I'm gonna make them about a quarter inch to a half inch wide and about one inch longer than the playing card. I'm going to attach the strips to the paper towel with a couple bits of duct tape, making sure to leave about an inch of it overhanging. And remember, we've made 11 strips, so set aside that 11th strip for later. All right, let's get some graphite onto these. I'm going to mix my paint and my graphite together. I don't have specific proportions for this. I just keep on adding graphite to the paint until I get a smooth, pasty mixture. Next, I apply it onto my pieces of paper towel on the same side as my copper strip. With the paint on, I now need to let these dry. While the cathodes are drying, I'm gonna prepare my anode. I'm going to take 10 of my playing cards and again, I'll use one of them as my template and I'm going to cut out 10 pieces of aluminum. Again, I want these pieces of aluminum to be slightly smaller than the playing card. With the exception of one card, which I'm going to make double the length of the playing card. This step is really critical because if the aluminum pieces are larger than the card, they could arc out to other cells and that's gonna short circuit the battery, which after spending all this time on is definitely something you don't wanna do, believe me. Next, I'm gonna attach my aluminum foil to my card using, you guessed it, duct tape. I'm gonna go around the rim of the card with duct tape and this is also gonna help to stop the battery from shorting itself out. When all the duct tape has been applied to the edge of the card, Trim the excess duct tape off so the size of the card is not altered. For the double sized piece of aluminum foil, wrap it around the card like so. Then take that last strip of copper mesh that you saved from earlier and attach it with duct tape. Make sure that the copper strip is touching both sides of the card like so because when you trim the duct tape, remember, chances are you could have cut off the edge of that aluminum foil and so there's actually two separate pieces now. I also need to take my parchment paper. I'm gonna cut out 10 squares. Again, the same size as my playing cards. This parchment paper is gonna act as a spacer between each of the battery cells, again, to help prevent shorting out. Next, I'm gonna move on to my electrolyte. It's super simple, just salt and water. I like to boil my water first, and I just keep on adding salt until it stops dissolving. This way, I get as much salt into my electrolyte as possible. And that is it. We got all the components made. Now we just need to put everything together. First, I'm gonna grab my 
bottom and that's the one with the copper strip on it. Next, I'm going to grab one of my cathodes and I'm going to put some electrolyte on it. Then, I'm going to lay it on top of the cathode, like so. At this point, I'm going to check the voltage, just to make sure everything's working properly. Look at that, we're almost at 0.6 volts. Oh, there we go. Past 0.6 volts. That's good. Let's get the next one. I'm going to grab one of my parchment paper pieces and we're going to put that on top. And that is going to help isolate the cell. Next, I take another one of my anodes, lay it on top, and I bend the copper strip over like so. Then, I take another cathode and I put some more electrolyte on. And this time, I put my cathode, the copper strip, in the opposite direction. And then, before we go ahead, we're going to check the voltage again. And we should be reading double what it was previously. Perfect. 1.2 volts. Now basically, I just have to repeat these steps until I've assembled all 10 cells. All right, we're done. Let's see what the final voltage reading is. See, we got 5.5. So we'll say 5.5 volts. We checked that the voltage is good. Now we just need to hold this all together. I'm going to wrap this cell with duct tape. Tightly because air still does need to get between these, but we just want it so that everything's held together. There we go, more or less good to go. So, here we have our finished product. Let's see what power this is putting out. is just over 5 volts. Let's see what the milliamps are like. Alright, so it jumps up to about 10 and then it drops down to about 3 milliamps. Still not terrible. So, I've got this light here with the battery sticking out of it. Let's see if we can get this powered with our new battery. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. This one's a little brighter. And just to prove that this is the actual battery, as soon as I take it off, it's done. Boom. 
little bit on the dim side, but hey, that's not too bad for some aluminum and salt water. I hope you enjoyed this and learned something new today. If you did like this video, be sure to smash that like button, drop a comment, and subscribe. If you really, really did like this video, you can support this channel by following the link in the description and buying me a copy. That's all I got for today. MGR out.